Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. In this segment, I will talk about pseudo random function. I will give you the basic foundation of how many functions can be defined between two sets. And then in the next segment, I will go deeper into pseudo random concept. All right, let's get, let it, let's get it going. Um, so what I'm going to do, show to you is extremely simple, discrete math problem, right? Suppose you have a set, um, let's say the set S is made of numbers, a binary string, let's call it binary string um, of size n, right? That means there are n bits to represent a string, right? For example, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on, n times. This is one particular string in this particular set, yes. Okay, that's just an example to give you an idea. Well, when I write uh, the set, yes, binary string, 0 or 1, and uh, on the superscript, I write n, that denotes the string length of one particular string in, in this particular set, okay. All right, um, now let's talk about uh, how many functions can I define between this uh, set S and another uh, and it to itself? Okay, the question is how many possible functions can I define from S to S? Okay, I will make it simple first by making the size of n small. Let's say n is one. Okay, okay, what it means? I'm only allowed to have one bit string, right? So, what are the possible ones, one bit strings? zero or one that's that's all right so i'm going to visualize this more uh, graphically say i put zero and one right and i wanted to map it to zero or one how many ways i can do that so this is one easy mapping right both um, zero and one map to uh, zero Okay, that's one function. We can call it f1 if you want, or f0, it doesn't matter. Um, the next, next function can be 0, 1, right? Mapping to, let's map it to 1, both cases, okay? You know what I mean, both zero and one map to one. This is the function f2, okay. What about third function? I can put zero, a one, and map it to zero, one, as an identity function, for example, right? Like this, this is f3, okay. And we are left with one more function, zero, one, mapping to one zero crossover okay so we defined four functions if n is one there are four possible functions you can define between um, the set s to itself okay um, of course the question will be what uh, how many functions when n is two n is three and so on so we, we like to have nice mathematical model that tells us a formula, you know, um, that, that tells us how many functions are possible if you have n bits. Okay, so um, at the beginning, uh, when I thought about this problem, it sounded like a complex problem. How, how, how can I come up with all possible functions? When n is two, uh, I started drawing a few and then I was a little tired. Uh, because there are so many functions you could do for n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and so on. So let me tell you a small trick you could play, um, which I find it very useful. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, view, view one function as a table, okay? So what is this table? Remember my, my set is, yes, made of strings, 0, 1, power n, meaning binary strings of length n, okay? That's the set I'm working with. So what are the possible values we can um, have? Um, what are the possible uh, numbers can we write with the n digits? We can have zero, 
all the way to 2 power n minus 1, right? These are the possible values we can write if you have an n bit number, okay? So now I'm going to define this table, okay? So how many bits do I need for each um, entry of my table? Okay, that's the first basic question. Remember my function maps an n bit number to another n bit number. That means my, my table, each row of my table, right? That there's only one column in this whole table. You, you can view it like that if you want, or you can also view it as n column, uh, whatever way you like, that's, that's perfectly fine. So uh, how many bits do I need to hear? I need n bits because my function maps um, an element from this set to the same set. Okay, n bit map to another n bit. That means we need the n bit here, some n bit number. Let, let me just write it 0, 1, 0, whatnot and so on, zero, that's an n-bit number. And another n-bit number is zero, zero, one, zero, so on, another n-bit number and so on, okay. So this is this whole thing can be viewed as one function, right? A function that takes as an input, an input can be, for example, if you're interested in f of one, all you do is you go to the, um, you go to the table and take the first entry. I'm starting the index from zero now. So it's f of one is basically the second item on your table. Okay. And suppose you would like to know f of two power n minus one, you go to the last entry of your table and then look at the value. So this is like a lookup table and that's how you can model one function. Okay, now um, we can generalize this idea. Okay, Let, let's pay close attention to how many bits do we need to represent one function, okay? How many rows do we have? Uh, we have, two power n rows, right? We start from zero all the way to two power n minus one. That means there are two power n rows, okay? Okay, keep a note on that. How many bits are there in each row? Each row has n bits, right? Because the function is mapping n bit to another n bit. So totally we need n into two power n bits to represent one function, to model one function. So. If we have n into two power n bits as a, as a long string, for example, just like this, right? Let's say this whole thing is made of n into two power n bits, okay? So every n bit here, if there are n bits here, another n bits here, what, what can we say about this? This is f of zero, we can view it like this. And this is f of one, right? And the last is f of uh, f of 2 power n minus 1. Okay, that's all. This is basically how you can view one function. And now we can do a small simple trick, um, which is also from discrete math. So how many strings can we generate if we have n bits? We can, we can reason about that way or I will use m to, to, to not confuse you. Suppose you have you have, you have, you've got m bits, okay? m can be two, for example. M, m is two means how many bits can I, uh, how many strings can I generate with two, two bits? It can be zero, zero, uh, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So I got four, how many I have? One, two, three, four, okay. So I have four possible strings I can generate if I have two bits. Okay, and now let's get back to here. So that means if I have n times two power n bits, how many um, strings can I generate with n times two power n bits? Okay. Well, it's simple. Um, here, m is two means you'll get four. If you put m equal to three, you will get eight. So if you have n bits, you can write you can generate two power m strings, okay? That means if you have n times two power n bits, you can generate two power n times two power n strings, okay? When I say string, this whole thing is one string. This is one, one string. So you can, you can imagine that I'm generating a multiple copies and how many copies I'm generating? Two power n times two power n 
a copy may not be the right, not, may not be the right word, but um, you have essentially two power n times two power n um, strings. Okay, that's because we, we just checked here for m equal to two, we can get two power m rows uh, when we write like this. Therefore, if we have n times two power n bits, we, we can happily generate two power n times two power n uh, possible strings. Okay, and each string is actually one function. That's all. So um, this is one function. We can call this function as f0 or f1, whatever you like. Um, and uh, we will be doing f uh, 2 power n times 2 power n minus 1 functions. If you start with uh, 1, you, you, can, you can get rid of this minus 1. But anyway, you got the idea that there are 2 power n times 2 power n functions. That's a lot of functions. So we can actually check uh, the correctness of my argument by just playing with a few uh, example scenarios. In fact, there's not money you can play with. Uh, let me tell you why. Suppose, um, suppose you have a simple scenario um, where you have only one bit. I shown four functions, right? You can substitute n equal to one here. So it will be two power one is two, two times uh, one is uh, two. 2 square is 4, so you got 4 functions. But imagine now you have n equal to 3 or n equal to 2. Uh, 2 power 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 2 power 8. That's 256 functions possible if you have 3 bits. Okay. Uh, and it's doubly exponential essentially. Okay. So what we learned in this segment is that um, if we are defining a function from um, a set um, of uh, binaries, right? of length n to another set of binaries of length n. How many possible functions that can be? That can be two power n times two power n functions. That's a lot of functions, okay? And why do we need to learn these things in cryptography? Um, we will be doing pseudo randomness uh, in, the, in the next lecture, uh, segment. And uh, you will need this concept of choosing a function uniformly from all possible functions. So when we say, Choosing a function, how many functions we have? We have, suppose I put a, uh, uh, yes. okay, <laughs> I do it terrible. Suppose I have a um, set of all functions. How many elements are there? I have function f0, f1, f, um, f, so many functions. I have a collection of functions. How many functions? Two power n times two power n functions. Um, each function, is equally likely that, it, that you know, when you randomly pick a function, you can pick F0 or F1 or F2, whatever. Those are all equally likely candidates, okay? Such a function is a uniform function, we call. We pick one function from a pool of all functions. And the pool of all functions is, is really, really large space, okay? Um, that, that we will use to compare against a pseudo random function, which is uh, coming from a, an algorithm, some algorithm that is generating an output for a given input. I'll talk about that in the next segment. But but the, the main point of this segment is to show to you that how can you compute how many functions are there from a set of n bits to another set of n bits. Um, to quickly summarize, all I did is this. I, I just to construct only one function as an example to show you um, for input value of f of zero, f of one, f of two power n minus one. These are the possible values, right? So you have one table, lookup table, and the lookup table takes n into two power n bits because the first, each row is made of n bits, right, in this table. And how many rows did I write? A two power n minus one, a zero to two power n minus one, which is two power n rows. Therefore, we get, we need n into two power n bits to, to represent one function, okay? So uh, we also know from discrete math that uh, if, if there are m bits, we can construct two power m strings. That means we can construct two power n times two power n strings. And in any row that you select from that uh, huge collection is one function. Each row is one function, and there are two power n times two power n, uh, two power n times two power n functions. That's exponential and double exponential. Okay, that's basically what I wanted to show to you. During the next segment, we will dive into the details of pseudo randomness. Okay, thank you very much.